Good to have you as well. I gave this van a good wash for some deep crazy the other day. Actually looks quite well now. Good oil change. Looks very clean down there. Bit of condensation there, but that's normal. Because it's cold at the top of the engine. I don't flog the crap out of it or anything. I thought it's idling because it sits here now. Yeah, I don't, don't use it much. I start it every now and then, give it a good run. Just to keep it in good spirits. The call looks good. That's pretty good in there. So, yeah, it's very clean in there. But, um, yeah, this does start first go all the time. But, yeah, starting when it's starting to have problems now. So, yeah, the batteries could have tested that. That's all it does, so I'm going to have to get under there and take that starter motor off and clean the contacts in the solenoid and check the brushes and the, and the armature just to see how they're going. So yeah, but before I take the, um, get that starter motor off, I've got to disconnect that battery. Alright viewers, I'm glad this is not in a front wheel drive car, this engine, as it originally was designed to be in. So, and there's a starter right there. So, very easy to get to. Just got to shift a few things out of the way. A fill filter just goes up there. It's supposed to clip in this little clip here, but because this van, Mitsubishi Express, that is, was originally a diesel, and there was originally a 4D56, I think the model engine was, a diesel engine. So, I think, I don't know what, what happened to it, but when this van was near new, that engine must have took a shit major and it wasn't really worth fixing so they put this for, I think it's a 4G32 um, 2.6 litre petrol engine in so yeah gotta, um, to get the starter motor off I've got a, it's a bolt up there and the other bolt is over here so that seems pretty easy enough so like I should be able to just push this fuel thing out of the way and don't put that starter motor down here so I can get to the wires and undo those wires so it all seems easy enough before I take this off I'll give the connections here a good jiggle around and see what they do because yeah this has been retro fitted this engine so I'll just give these wires a jiggle in case it's not, the problem's not in the motor itself I'll give this all a good give the connections here a good um, tighten on this solenoid here and see what happens. And if that don't fix it, then I'm definitely going to take it all off and check it and clean the um, brushes and the contact in here to be sure. So, and there's the inline fuel pump. I'm like fuels, I did the bolts up tightly, they were slightly loose, so I see how it starts now. Still nothing. Alright, I think that starter motor is going to have to come off. Okay, viewers, the starter's been removed. As you can probably see down there, if I can get my eyes on the screen of this camera. Yeah. 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 I could... You can... Yeah, I'll try and get the zoom in on the flywheel here. This is the starter motor was. The camera might pick it up, but like I said, the flywheel's got a bit of um, grinding on it. Like when, the, when you engage the starter and the Bendix grinds on the flywheel. Because um, before this was here, the surgery ran so down quiet, some people who had not the um, curly business had it before we did. Well, they've actually done, they tried to start it when the engine was already running. So everyone makes that mistake. They've actually ran a bit off the floor, but it's still okay for the starter bending to engage. You can start them over here, get the that, it's pretty healthy. Maybe it's just like, it's got a little bit of wear on it. Bloody soul on a little clean. Nothing. Definitely a more modern type of starter motor anyway. You can't take the um whole magnets out and put a little um feel magnet. It doesn't even have a back bearing on it, it's all internal. So another safety tip. When you work under a dirty car or something that's got dust falling off it, wear safety glasses so crud don't fall on your eyes. 
so I've worked my car safe. I don't know if you also just found something very, very bad, uh, seriously wrong with this starter. You can see here, there's a bloody crack here, all the way back here, here, and under here. This solenoid is actually separated from the, the housing end cap of this starter. It's just cracked and it's just held on by the um, pressure of this assembly here, the, when the motor is bolted together. So pressure of this, holding this together. So that's why I'm not getting good ground. So I think I'm going to have to find a new starter for this van. So it's cracked down there and it's finished off and worked its way around there. It made a complete break. So it's probably going to cost too much to take this in and get a TIG welded. Because it is alloy, not steel. I can't just weld it. So yeah, it's been broken for a while. I don't know how they did that unless when it was on the engine. They took it out of a donor car and they must have knocked it like that. That's probably the only, re only way I think that ha how that got broken. So I'll have to take this apart and just clean it out anyway and see what happens. I'll see if I can, um, I've got another, I've got that old Daiatsu handy van you would have seen in a really old previous video. I'll see if that started, um, fits that van because it looks the same size as this. I'm not sure about the Bendix or the um, bolt so I'll find out. See how this goes. So I'm going to have to start by taking these bolts out and check the brushes to take that out. And get the brushes a good clean and clean the commutator. So yeah, that or I could just get a new end part from the Vickers. But I'm better off getting the whole complete starter. Okay, if yours, this is definitely a modern starter motor. Moisture's gotten in this. Corroded out the um, commutator here. It's crud's gotten on here and it's ground along here and ground along these field poles. You can see there, it just made a nice grinding mess in that. So, bits and pieces of the edges of these field poles chopped out. The brushes are okay, they're not scored, but the bearing's dry. So, this starter motor's had a lot of crud in it. I think I'm better off getting a new one. Goes in there like that. You can see where this is, where this is broken here. There you go. That's why I'm getting a bad ground, so it's probably getting in through this crack. And moisture just wrecking the, ruining the connection to earth. Yeah. See how the scrape has just been happening in this. It's done some damage, but it still works alright. It still cranks like new, so. That thing out of that, away from that plunger, and I can get this little thing out. Yeah, it's pretty messy in here. I don't know what I sealed the um, windings though. How the hell are they supposed to get cool? It's lacquer. I don't know how a starter motor is supposed to keep cool. It's not really designed to crank for ages it's just the engine don't start. So this starter motor wouldn't last long to crank an engine that won't start. So I'm going to have to go over this with some sand, uh, real fine emery paper. Polish up these, um, this commutator bar here. They could use it a good polishing. Give you a little blow up with some air, grease the bearings, contact clean everything, and we'll see how it goes. There you go, that's just going there. Eh? Alright, here was it. Um, fine, I think it was 240 grit sandpaper. I polished up the com bars here, or a commutator, as it's called. Looks pretty neat, nice and clean. And I've run a little fine um, blade in between those bars to get all the um, uh, metal out of there because that will short the bars out. That's got a good clean to blow out with some compressed air. Put the little, don't lose these either because these tend to fall off. So that goes there. And there's two little spaces in there. So I'll fill this up with some HTB grease or bearing grease. Fill those up. Put the um, bearing in there up with that grease. Put it back together. 
put on that thing back in there is going to be fun. It's something to hold those rushes back, so... Yeah, that's going to be fun. Well, uh, viewers, here's a little fork that pulls the, um, the Bendix in the position, in the gear. I'm going to give that little fork there a good clean. And here's a plunger. And there's a little contact in there. So yeah, the plunger's cleaned out. There's a bit of crud in there. You can see it's been scraping a bit. Contact's not too bad. The solenoid's alright. It's just the, um, that crack in the housing. So I'm going to give that all a good clean anyway. There you go. You can see how bad this really is. So typically this end assembly, I've got to just get a new one of those. Which I you could probably still get them because that's a genuine Mitsubishi starter motor. A lot of modern cars now have Mitsubishi starter motors now, so. But you won't be able to buy this part as a separate thing. You have to buy the whole complete starter. Which probably works out to be cheaper. That's all pretty good in there. So it doesn't look like anything is to have gotten in there and wrecked or um, corroded in that solenoid assembly. I'm just going to give this bloody end cap a bath and some petrol. Clean it up really well. So I can see how bad that crack is. So then I'll pull it all back together and see how it works. But that crack's going to be a problem. Oh, well, viewers, a good degreasing and a scrub. It came up looking brand new. But now you can really see that crack. It goes all around there. Yeah. Moisture's gotten into that crack and just corroded. And it's making the earth connection even worse. So, yeah. This is only just holding on. If I'm strong enough, I could break this off with my hands, I reckon. It's only holding on in there and a tiny bit in there. This little brace here is what's um, supposed to make it stronger, but it didn't actually work. It's a little bit in there where it's still attached, so well, it hasn't got much to hold on to. So let's put it back together, see how it performs. It's going to keep clicking, so but it's better than what it was. So let's see how it goes. I'll see if I can. Um, I got a Nip and Denze one, the size, same size. So I'm not sure if the bolts are the same. Then this is a genuine Mitsubishi starter motor. Yeah, a lot of. That's what I had about modern starter motors, they're all far away. Yeah. Not really meant to be rebuilt anymore, which is pretty sad. So I'll put it back together, see how it goes. Well the orchard's all greased and contact cleaned and put back together. Looks brand new now. Except for this, so yeah. That's almost broken completely free. I'll give it a test now. Let's see how she works. We always give it a good test. Sewing on first. Works. And there you go, they're working good. Sounds nice and clean, so runs nice and smooth, so that's good. I'll, I'll see what the um, Nip and Denze one's like. If that doesn't look like it's going to fit, I'll put this back in the van. Because I don't really like this crack here. It's going to be intermittent all the time, so yeah. Okay, viewers, this car is pretty much junk now. Bodywork is absolutely trashed. I can't even close the driver's side door anymore. There's a pillar split open there, broken there, the roof's coming off here, rust there. That jam's shut while the body is warped on it and holding it closed. I'm still thinking about um buggy I'm going to make. This engine assembly would be sweet to have in a buggy, so leave everything attached here. But I don't think this starter motor is going to fit. It sits that way, look at the position of the solenoid, it's different. That one here sits lower. So, and it bites under the flow all the same way though, I think. It sits in that angle there. No, the angle's slightly different on that starter. Where the um, mouth opens here to the Bendix. So, damn it, it'd be nice to have that starter motor on the van. Nip and Denzo, it's good quality stuff. So, I'll put this thing back on.
I have to put up with an intermittent connection to Earth. Although I might just redneck come up with a ray, put some sort of grounding strip on this. That might work. Alright, if there was a starters now reattached. Let's see how this engine starts now, so yeah. A bit greasy and messy, but that debris is about good to clean this. So yes, yeah, get this thing started and see how it performs. Would have been a whole lot less strain on my shoulders if I had a hoist. Man, that work would be so much easier. And I was so real glad this isn't a front wheel drive. Because that would have been an absolute nightmare to get to the starter mode. You probably have to pour the engine out to get to the starter mode on some cars. <laughs> Left the key on. Nothing hot, so there's no shorts, obviously, so that's good. Let's see how this thing performs. Better start good too. Nah. Okay, I've messed something up because the fuel pump should not be on when the key is off like that. So, I messed the fuel pump wire up there. And that starter mode is still being intermittent, so. Damn it. I think I, got, I think I put this thing the wrong way. I've got to flip it that way for some reason, so. Let's see what happens. Power's going to the accessories to the ignition, but even when the ignition is completely off. So, if I flip this the other way around, maybe that will correct that problem. Just gotta undo that and just turn it. That should fix it. Okay, if you always manage to put the bloody solder on the, wrong, the right way, I think the problem is this relay here. Because that clicks and it's not, putting, not sending power to the um, starter solder, one, I would say. I have to remove that relay and fill it with contact cleaner and see what happens. Alright, viewers, we've got a bad relay somewhere. Clicking is coming from this side. I felt the solder order in my hand and I could not f feel anything going on with that solenoid. So it's there's big thick wires going up under this seat somewhere where the air cleaner is. So there might be a relay under here somewhere that's gone, um, got a bad contact. So I have to try and investigate. So I have to take this seat out, pull the air box cap uh, lid off, and there. Yeah, Search for a bad relay in there. Alright, uh, Viola, I did a test of this relay. Uh, got a cut and you test here between these two big terminals on the multimeter. Click in the relay, no continuity. So, the contacts on this that control the um, solenoid not the starter motor, so the contacts in here have gone all um, carbonised and not passing any current. So, see if I can open this up and clean those contacts. That should do it. Alright viewers, whoever installed records or whoever bloody installed the engine in this van had no brains because this was sitting upside down like that and this blew the hole. Whenever you wash the van or water got under, under, the, under the vehicle, water set up in here, filled up through that hole and filled this cavity in, right, relay enclosure of water. And that set up to this level and rusted the um, contact and rusted the hell out of that. So it's no wonder it wasn't working. See if I can clean that. And this time I installed a bastard properly, so that's all it was. Some stupid idiot's mistake, so I should be able to polish up those contacts. Okay, viewers, success! Perfect! One of my starts too with the keys off. Beautiful! Son of a bitch, it was that all along. Yeah, if I wiggle it. I'm going to get this up and give it a really, really good polish. Alright viewers, after all that, moment of truth. Alright, beautiful. You can see when I bloody got the rocket horse and just got the gas and cut the bloody thing out to fit this um, air cleaner in, which is not the correct part. Awesome. That's 
Stay clean, you bastard. There you go. That's working nice and good. Perfect. Yay! Now I'm going to put it back together and find a better place to mount it instead of sitting there and dangling it upside down and where water can sit in it. Bloody assholes. Anyway, I'll mount that up somewhere, up here or something, so it sits upright. Here seems like a good spot, put a bolt through there. So yeah, let's get that done properly and she should stay like that. Okay viewers, before I put this back together, I went and put some of this stuff in. This is like um, rust joy or um, rust oleum. Pretty much the same stuff, just on a different manufacturer. This is made by Bodytech, rust converter. You gotta shake the hell out of it and put it been sitting for a bloody long time. I've had, to, I've had to just break up the chunks, get it to react so it activates again. Then pour the tiny bit, pour a little, um, about a quarter of a cap full in here, switched it, and look at that, it's destroyed all that rust. Beautiful. Got to love nip nip and nip on Denso quality. Good stuff. Very high quality manufacturer nip and Denso. Perfect. Now that's all dried out. So yeah. Just really good polish up with a little um, brushing and put it back together. I've always changed the plan. I decided to put more of this stuff in. So yeah, let it set for 20 minutes. I just cleaned this um, enclosure and this is what the rust converter left behind. Fresh metal. Killed rust. So that ain't gonna rust anymore. This stuff's fantastic. Gotta get some more of this. So handy stuff to have. Okay now it's all been dried out completely and repaired. Very happy with that. So let's put it back together. Okay, the also, that's how it should have been bloody installed, like that. Like they're supposed to. Let's take some slack off those wires. There you go. And that's how it's supposed to go. Now look at that! Oh, I fixed it! It's a dense like a good quality stuff. Working. Ah, that's beautiful. Yeah, the cam starts getting plenty of oil splashed about, which is a good thing. Very clean in there, very happy with that. The engine's really healthy. Alright. Put this thing back together and we're fixed, so yeah. Oh, that was about two and two and a half hours work all up, so yeah, not a bad job. So, okay, wheels, another thing. I noticed this cap was a bit loose fitting. It was a bit of a bit of play when I had the cap on tight, and I noticed it was seeping oil all around here, just always oily around here. I found that this spring here, or this rubber actually, is a bit softened, and it's um just gone. Yeah, it's gotten hard and it's just shrunk. So what I've done to fix that, I've um, redid these clips, retentioned them, just bent them back a tiny bit so it springs. It works beautifully now. No play there, so that's a good seal. So yeah, thanks for watching.